I've never been in the Labour Party. <laughs> and I'm not in the Labour Party as it stands, but I now think um, this is something I could consider. I, I really like him a lot. I've known Jeremy for quite a long time as a co-speaker at various demonstrations we've been on. So I've, I've seen him on the podium, but, um, and I've, I trust him. You know, he's a man who has convictions and he has interesting, well-thought-out views, and he's not afraid of saying them. So do you think there are a lot of people in the country like you who've not been in political party before, perhaps, who are being brought in by Jeremy Corbyn? Are there enough of them to really take him across the line? Well, just think, a lot of people didn't vote in the last elections, especially young people. And I think they didn't vote because they didn't know what to vote for. And to tell you the truth, I found it difficult to know what to vote for. It was difficult to choose of the, among the candidates because they all seem to be saying very slight variations of the same thing, which is what we've been hearing for 20 years, the sort of basic business agenda. And uh, I think now they'll, there will be something to vote for. So I think there's going to be a big constituency among people who didn't ever vote before. And so you've, you've come to this fresh, you've, you've signed up for a vote, never having been a member of the Labour Party before. If there are enough people like you at the end of this contest, we're going to have a completely different sort of Labour Party. I hope so, and we might have a completely different kind of politics. You know, at the moment, the, the fear of not being elected has driven politicians to be so careful about what they say and to essentially say slight variations of the same things. You know, um, I think for somebody to come along and change the conversation and say, actually, there are other things we should be talking about is what I'm hoping for, and I think he can do it. It wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was 1997. Tony Blair got elected with a landslide in this country. Do you really think there's a, it, that there's a potential landslide in this country for views which are so, so far opposed to him? I think the electability issue is a little bit of a red herring at the moment. I think what's important now is that a party forms which represents what people are thinking about and what people want to do, and which is informed about the the current moment. I think that's the important priority. Then think about getting it elected afterwards. At the moment, we don't have any political parties that seem to me have original, interesting ideas. So that's the first thing to solve, is that problem. Then the election part comes afterwards. But I think to say at the outset, oh, those people are too weird, they'll never be elected, so we're not even going to encourage them. That shuts down the conversation so badly that we get the kind of pap that we've had for the last couple of decades. Is there a danger or a worry for you that this is a London phenomenon? London Labour Party did quite well in London during the general election, it was the one place they did really. Is there a danger that here people are having conversations with themselves, self-affirming conversations, and in the rest of the country they're still not listening to this sort of thing? I'm, I don't know this is the answer to that. I really don't know enough about the other, other cities, but what I do know is that the UKIP phenomenon, for example, actually absorbed a lot of Labour voters who were disenchanted with the way Labour had gone. They were people who wanted some kind of change. They didn't find it in Labour. They, didn't, they of course, don't see it in the Conservatives. So they almost reluctantly, I think, went into UKIP. So I, th I think that's another well of people who are not natural UKIP supporters, but they, they are people who want some sort of a change. And, you know, they, they're mostly out of London, actually. They are on the sort of East Coast and those kinds of places. So, so I think we might be surprised where support for him comes from.